Let's go ahead and set up Confluence using Docker in five minutes and with the site of Postgres, which means we'll also be installing Postgres all pretty much with one click. Um, so the steps from, for going from zero to hero here are we install Docker, which means, you know, just a super basic install. Uh, and then we have a Docker Compose file. And then we will run Docker Compose against that file and then just watch it happen. It's going to download Confluence Postgres, start them up, we're done, essentially. Uh, except we have to click through a couple Confluence setup screens, which are very basic. Then we're actually done. And then we're going to look real quick at like what's up and running. So let's get started. So we're essentially starting with a directory for all practical purposes with just one file. Uh, this is just something, some, a place I'm sticking things. But basically, the only thing you need is Docker Compose YAML. Um, now, to get everything started, this is all we have to do. Docker Compose up and it's going to fire everything up. Uh, but let's look really quickly at the contents of that file. So it's pretty simple. Um, obviously, you can look for in the Docker Compose uh, documentation, Docker documentation, and examples for what all this means. But the important parts are you, you say what images you're using. Um, you need to pass in some environment information in some cases. Um, the, this is the mapping between the local file directory, and then the internal uh, container file directory. Um, you can see that we have that in both places. This is handy because if you're looking for files generated by these containers that are running, uh, like you want to look at the logs and things of that nature, or you might want to move the stuff you have to like a new server, that's, that's where you'll look. Um, down here, uh, this is the same type of mapping intern, or sorry, uh, external port 8090 to the internal port that's configured on the um, container itself. So there you have it. That's it. Pretty simple. And now let's run it. Um, so what I actually did was to, I had already downloaded the images, but I want you, you to see what it looks like in the first time. So it's actually going to pull the images down from Docker Hub, install everything it needs, which is actually happening pretty fast. I'll probably speed up this part of the video. All right, there we go. Fired up Postgres very quickly. Confluence is starting. Um, it does take, well, actually the first time Confluence will start up in just a few seconds. Once you have it up and running and it's actually been like fully installed, it'll take, you know, Anywhere from 30 seconds to a couple minutes generally to start. Confluence is definitely the slowest part of this whole process in terms of startup times. All right, Postgres is definitely started up. And Confluence, like I said, the first time starts up pretty quickly. So now let's flip over to um, where Confluence is probably running. Localhost, there we go. It's up. Let's let's click through what we need to click through. Um, for the license, you can either use like a 10 user license or a license you have. You can also, if you Google um, Confluence, if you Google Atlassian Time Bomb licenses, they provide these licenses that work for three hours. So we're just going to use that one. Whoops. In this case, if we can get our uh, get our clipboard working, there we go. And we're going to say my own database because we're going to point it at Postgres. Click here, connection string. Um, now this, um, which is, this is the connection string we need. And if you're wondering where these values come from, um, 5432, I think, is the default Postgres port, which is seen internally on this network here. Um, I, not, I think it's not actually exposed. I'm not sure. Maybe it is. Anyway, um, and then up here we said what the database username and password are. Um, which you can uh, change, of course, in your, your file. All right, let's stick that in here. And also defined in our Docker Compose file whoops, was Confluence as the username and password. Whoops, I think I had a typo there. Test connection, good to go. Next, I might speed up this part because it does take, it, it takes uh, maybe a couple minutes, something like that. All right, now that that's done, you can save if you want an example site or an empty site. 
I'm just going to go ahead and say empty site. This is just a quick, uh, uh, just fill in your admin account information. This is just a local dev server for me, so it doesn't really matter what I put. And that's it. Call it a day. Um, it's done. So just doing a final, you know, configuration. Or uh, the, basically right now it's just firing up the, um, you know, I think it's caching, building and caching the templates, which it hasn't run before. Let's not save that password. That's it. Let's start. And I'll take us to the first screen. So that was it. I don't know where we are in the time. Oh, got to create a space. Crystal gems, I think is, whoops, games, whatever. I think that's sort of one of the default spaces. Um, maybe it would take you if you had used the demo space right to that. All right. So that's it. Um, Confluence up and going. Now, uh, that's, that's it. You can call it a day. Um, now, there's this other handy tool called Portainer, which gives you a very handy, easy view into the containers running on your Docker engine. Um, so Portainer itself is a Docker container. It's running here. And then here we have Postgres and Confluence. So you can do a few nice things here. Uh, if you want to see the logs real easily, you can click through on that. We can also look at the file system because we know where those logs are. Um, looks like there is probably a little error there, which is standard. Anyway. Um, we can, and from here we can start and stop the containers. We can see what's running. That's all really nice. Uh, so that is it. That's absolutely it. Oh, and I was going to show real quick. Um, if you want to do install portainer, I'll just go to the same directory I was in. Actually, it doesn't matter where you do this. Let's see if I can bring it up here. Uh, yep, this is the command. You can find it. You just Google portainer. Um, but basically, if we were to run this, uh, it would ins download and install portainer. You give it an admin and password and that uh, login password. That's it. So is this amazing? Yes. If you've installed <sighs> Confluence a couple times or 10 times or 100 times or even 1,000 times, um, it's not super easy um, and it's a bit time consuming and if you're managing you know different dev systems or uh, servers for clients or just your own company you're setting up different servers and upgrading them doing those types of activities this is far and away the easiest way to do it that currently exists so thanks for listening